Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Wisconsin High School Esports Association Week 6 varsity matchup between Montello and Wauwatosa West. It's been a bit of a, a busy day. Um, lots going on last night. If you tuned in, uh, you would see that we talked about a ton of material dealing with the state championship. Uh, so please make sure that you go out to the website. You double check that. Uh, go out to the championship information site, sign up for a t-shirt, sign up for a volunteer form if you're interested. Um, and uh, yeah, double check all that information. There's a YouTube video as well on the Discord channel and on the uh, on, on the YouTube channel. And we tweeted it out. So double check that as well. We are also running a special uh, giveaway today. So if you uh, guess the correct number of deaths before tonight's matchup starts, uh, you can be entered to win a random skin. So all you have to do is type exclamation point, vote, space, and then a number that you think uh, is going to be the total number of deaths for both teams today. So uh, again, looking at the matchup today, already on the left is Montello. They're going to go ahead and ban out Talon, Fiora, and Vlad. Yeah, we'll go ahead and get those up there as well. Um, whereas Tosa West is going to go ahead and get rid of the Alawi, the Galio, and the Mundo. Um, Galio is pretty popular right now, although he did receive a little bit of a nerf uh, not too long ago. Um, so be interesting to see where we see Lucian, first ADC off the board. That's pretty common right now. He's very OP in the bot lane. And we see that Wabatosa West is... Hovering a Tristana, so that's not a bad uh, play into Lucian. But they're going to go ahead and pick the Jax. Jax can flex to either the top lane or into the jungle. It's pretty popular right now in the top lane. Tosa is going to go ahead and pick up the Swain as well. So that's a pretty powerful pick. If we take a quick look while it looks like Montello is hovering the LeBlanc here. If we take a look at the standings right now, Montello is sitting at 2-0 and and Tosa is sitting at 1-1. One and one. So both these schools kind of middle of the pack right now. Again, we have a ton of, of makeup games and rescheduled games given... Uh, all the snow and cold days that we've had. So, uh, so we do see instead of the LeBlanc, they elected to go for the Ari, which also is not a terrible pick, uh, especially if that's going to be going into the, the Swain. I'm going to go ahead and cast my vote right now. And I think that there are going to be 28 total. Uh, let's see if my poll's working. And the poll is working, so uh, make sure if you want to vote, just type exclamation point vote and then the number that you think. So Montel is going to go ahead and round out Nunu, and Tosa is going to go ahead and take the Nico. Nunu is actually slated to go ahead and get some nerfs in the upcoming patch uh, because it's pretty popular. It's pretty potent right now in the current patch. So uh, we'll see how Montello does with that going into what I assume to be the Nico jungle. Tosa is going to go ahead and start the second round of bands with a Lux ban. And the Caitlyn ban is going to come out from Montello. Uh, if we look at some other Week 6 matchups here uh, in the Division 2 for League of Legends, we got St. Catharines against Oconto. McFarlane is playing Walden 3rd. Clinton playing Whitnall. West De Pere playing Baraboo. And the Wisconsin Dells playing against Elkhorn. Uh, in the Division 1, we have Milton against Wausau West. That should be a pretty good matchup. J.I. Case, one of the undefeated schools, playing against Waukesha West. Cedarburg is playing Horlick, Bayport against Waterford, Muskego against Janesville, and Wilmont against Arrowhead. Um, and I know some issues came up with Arrowhead as well. So uh, if you're scheduled to play them, double check the uh, the Discord channel as well. Uh, 
Uh, rounding out the band phase here, we have a Nami coming out for Tosa, and we have the Shen band coming out from Montello. So both teams trying to um, take out some of the, uh, the support plays there. And we're going to go ahead and see a Vayne locked in from Tosa. Oh, that's going to be a Kled coming in top. Kled is a really popular pick right now from what I've been seeing on, on Twitch. Um, not necessarily in pro play, but just in general. He's pretty potent right now. Oh, and a Karma pick's going to come out as well. So that's a that, that's going to be a Karma support coming down there with the Lucian. So quite a bit of poke down there. And let's go ahead and see what Tosa finishes off there draft with it's going to be a rakan rakan's a pretty nice pick with vein uh gives you a little bit of cc gives you that engage they did kind of nerf rakan in the last patch he's actually supposed to get buffed in 9.5 um so we'll see how the the synergy works here tosa doesn't necessarily have a, a very big frontline tank but with that rakan you have that easy dash in and dash out um Nico is always a curveball. Uh, Swain can act as a bit of a tank, so we'll have to keep an eye as to what first item that Swain is going to elect to build. Most likely, it's going to be Rod of Ages. As far as Montello's side here, we do see the Kled engage with the Nunu engage. I'm really excited to kind of see how that synergizes uh, together. So as we're about to get everything all set up, ready to go, we're going to go ahead and get into the spectator delay here. Um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit as well, just about some of the other items that kind of coming up here. I want to draw some special attention to the championship information. Again, the video, uh, if you weren't able to watch it last night, it is important that you watch it because if you make it to the semifinals, your team is expected. It is mandatory that you come up to Game On and Fond du Lac in order to uh, duke it out with the other semifinalists for your game. The schedule is available on the website as well. I know it says the cost is $20 right now per student, and I'm working. We are working on getting another sponsor so that that number comes down a little bit. Uh, they will have a food truck available on site. Uh, they're going to try to specialize in like some pizzas and stuff like that. Um, but even, no matter what, make sure that you t fill out the t-shirt form, no matter what. So that way we can make sure that we have the shirt that you want when you get there. Uh, if you make it to the semifinals, we'll have that available. The complete schedule is available. You can see the brackets already and how the seating is working. So if you're, if you're already thinking about three weeks in advance here, you're going to want to figure out where you're going to be seated. So kind of... Pick your path. Again, Smash is, is a lot different than the rest of the games. So make sure that you check out the video that I posted to YouTube last night. Um, so that way you can get all the information that you need. If you're interested in other games as well, Not Your Parents Basement is streaming as well. Uh, that's twitch.tv slash Not Your Parents Basement. Uh, today they have two matchups there. So I believe it's uh, Case against Waukesha West. And then Horlick is playing Cedarburg. So both of those are going to be available on the Not Your Parents Basement stream. So go ahead and check that out if you're interested in watching those schools. Again, if you'd like to, to get a vote in, uh, make sure all you got to do is type in exclamation point vote and then the number of total deaths. If you guess correct, you'll get a free skin. So... Uh, it'll just be a, a random skin, but who knows if nobody guesses for the next three weeks, maybe during playoffs, I will give away specific skins like you get to call it if you guess it correct. So uh, and if you don't want skins, who knows? Maybe I have a couple Panera gift cards sitting in front of me. I have a couple Marcus Theater gift cards sitting in front of me as well that we could consider giving away. So.
check out some of these mastery points here. Looks like quite a few people are relatively new to a, a lot of these champions. So that's my music not loud enough, Crypto. So it is going to go ahead and be a Jax jungle. So I believe that's going to be Nico mid then. I can't help the dog, man. What if I turn down my, my headset and try to turn this up? Yeah, the dog is chasing his tail in his kennel right now and he's making a ton of noise. I was hoping that Taking him for a mile walk as soon as I got home from work would be good enough to tire him out, but the puppy disproves that logic. Also, crypto, I appreciate what you said in the in the chat that. You know, if, if any student said that they can't afford it to, to just reach out to you, appreciate that, bud. That's that's selfless. The t-shirts are great. It's great to hear. I love great t-shirts. Don't see anything too out of the ordinary. Neither team decided to go ahead and uh, really uh kind of cheese or, or counter jungle there so it is actually going to be a swain top sorry so let me go ahead and switch that around um speaking of t-shirts i went and talked to another company yesterday and am uh, considering going with them as well so they have uh, a little bit cheaper of t-shirts and then they are also the ones that are going to be providing our trophies for the state championship they have uh I found some other trophies that they had available, kind of like the ones that were voted in the Discord channel. But if you win your game, if your school wins the state championship for your game, there's going to be a 15-inch trophy. Uh, and if your team is the runner-up at state, then you're going to go ahead and receive a 12-and-a-half-inch trophy. So, um, oh, yeah. the the Sorry, Crypto. I thought you were talking about the state t-shirts and i was like yeah i'm pretty excited about those too but i totally forgot that you had those discord hype squad t-shirts oh nico's gonna get ganked a little bit early here but she's got her clone and is able to go ahead and just dodge away so well played there by tosa's mid laner not a huge gap right now except kled's got a little bit of a cs advantage in the top lane over swain oh yeah uh so the day of the, the state championship, those semifinalists that, that make it all the way up, make sure that you thank uh, that you thank Crypto. He's got a bunch of Discord swag that he's going to be able to give away since we're hype squad members. He's got a bunch of pins and stickers and stuff like that from Discord that we're able to, to give away. Um, working on trying to do as much as possible to make it a super cool, super cool event. Most likely going to really need to see that uh, Toso West starts looking towards this top lane here to, to try to help their uh, their Swain top get a little bit of uh, a CS back here. He's he's down by a 15 CS, and this Kled is going to be able to start dropping some, some pretty good damage here. That's a nice little uh, Swain pull and able to go ahead and get that health regen back. Almost was able to... Oh, there he goes. Is able to dismount Kled. The only issue is when Clyde is in this form, he actually does more damage. Ooh, that's a nice pull there as well. Oh, I was really hoping to look down at my mini map and see that Jax was heading top, but unfortunately Jax is just farming it up, trying to get a little bit of an advantage. Karma's getting a little bit of a poke down there on the Rakan Vein combo. See some pings coming out. 
Uh, both schools look like they're just pretty pretty okay with getting some uh, some scaling going here. Uh, Nico and Jax both backed. Uh, Jax is starting to get a little bit of the uh, the jungler item built in, a little bit of the attack speed. Uh, personally, I would love to see Jax come in top right now. Kled is top is basically free right now, uh, but it looks like Jax is just going to go down into his jungle and and probably go for that Gromp. Maybe start to look to go for the dragon. Nunu just pinged the dragon as well. Montello's got pretty good vision down there on the dragon. Kled still in his uh, his dismounted status and we see nico pinging that she's going to start coming top uh this this kled's kind of been in this form for, for quite a while we're going to see the the new new coming down the heel coming out vane's going to go ahead and flash out new is going to go ahead and get the first blood oh this could be a double kill coming down here for Nunu. i don't know if they got the damage there's a slight knockout from the snowball and they're going to go ahead and give the kill over to lucian and while that's all happening, Kled elects to go ahead and back under the safety of Tower now that he's back on his chocobo-looking character. If you know the lore, let me know. I don't know what the uh, what he rides, but to me it looks like a chocobo from uh, Final Fantasy. So, Again, a little bit of a trade. So now Swain's going to have to be kind of careful up here as Kled's got the finished Tiamats. Um, it's going to be able to, to throw some more damage and, and have even more wave clear. So uh, Swain, it's okay if you just go ahead and play passive, play under tower. Um, it's, it's more important to play smart and to protect that neutral objective up in the top lane than it is to, to necessarily get the kills. So... Swain's just going to go ahead, and it does look like Swain is going to go ahead and start building the Rod of Ages. I can't imagine that he's going to go ahead and build the Abyssal Mask first. Um, it doesn't really make sense to build MR in the top lane against a, an AD champion. So, Jax is starting to get a little bit ahead here. Jax is about 80% of the way to hitting level 6. Um, here comes another nice big snowball coming in the bot lane. Nunu's coming down. Going to go ahead and get the vein there. We're going to go ahead and see Karma getting some slow, getting the root. There's going to be another kill going over to Lucian. <laughs> Lucian diving in. Thought the flash was going to be enough there for Rakan to get away. He was able to go ahead and save himself from the, uh, the ignite that was dropped down on him as well. I thought he brought ignite. Nope, sorry, I'm wrong. But that's going to go ahead and now be a 600 gold bounty and a 3-0 Lucian in the bot lane so good ganks coming out from montello's jungler really good map awareness putting the pressure there and that might actually be a turret plate maybe two there to the bot lane for montello we do see nunu is uh trying to hold off this nico here nico is six trying to get some of the poke down here we could see a, a three on three coming down here in the bot lane nico Trying to find space for the ultimate. There's the ultimate coming down. But I don't think Nico's going to have enough damage. And Rakan and Vayne just aren't able to go ahead and get the necessary damage put down. So that's going to be a little bit of a, a back and forth down here. And it's not going to go ahead and go anywhere. So, so I watch quite a bit of collegiate uh, interviews with coaches and stuff like that and some of the pro coaches as well um, one thing that they really stress here especially when you're drafting for uh, team composition like this you want to figure out which lane that you really want to focus to win through right so as you're drafting keep that in mind that although you have like your pocket pick champions pocket pick champions don't always play well into team composition and when you're playing in, in a 5v5 team comp it makes a huge difference compared to when you're just trying to climb up on solo queue. So the Swain pick is pretty good because it's got a very big AOE ultimate and stuff like that. But when you're going up against the Kled, Kled is pushing him under tower constantly. He's not going to be able to get the CS. He's not going to be able to get the, um, the items uh, in order to deal the damage that he really needs to carry the team. 
So looking at Tosa's team composition, it's definitely gonna be the bot lane. You wanna get that Vayne even farther ahead than she already is in CS. Although she's down right now, uh, two kills right now, Vayne's one of those champions that you get three, you get three items on, you get those, the, the crit damage and the, the cooldown reduction and stuff like that. Vayne is able to shred an entire team uh, real quick. We do see that uh, Lucian does have a tendency to have a nice early game, but that doesn't necessarily mean, oh, that's a nice Vayne hook, or sorry, a nice Swain hook, and that's gonna go ahead and be Kled having to go ahead and flash away there, but it is gonna go ahead and cost a Mountain Drake going over to Montello. And we're gonna see some of this damage being put down on the turret up here. But so the collegiate coaches and the pro coaches always talk about finding a lane that you want to win through. Uh, which lane that you really want to try to focus and, and not necessarily feed, but at the same time feed. Uh, the Nico ultimate coming down, going to go ahead and root everyone. I, I think she's got enough. She does have enough damage in order to go ahead and get through the Ari, but I don't know if she's got enough damage in order to get away from the Nunu. She is able to go ahead and get away from the Nunu. So well played there by Nico to secure the kill, despite having a two-on-one disadvantage there. Um, but again, yeah, the... the Finding a lane in order to, to really scale and make sure that you you have a win condition through. So, oh, unfortunate for the Swain. Flashes into the snowball. So Tosa's win condition right now is going to be the Vayne in the bot lane. Lucian has a tendency to kind of fall off in the late game. Uh, his damage just kind of plateaus. So it's going to be hard you could, you could make the argument that the Ari with the charm, you got the CC from the Nunu. You could even really see the Kled being the carry for Montello. The damage that Kled is able to go ahead and throw down and his ability in order to basically fast travel to get to lane can make a huge difference. And especially with that, that ulti, he can be split pushing. And if he's split pushing, it's gonna require uh, Tosa in order to take one of their either probably vain or, or even nico in order into a side lane in order to deal with them so it's going to be tough for for montello if they get two lanes ahead then then they're pretty pretty good there the jungle is is pretty far ahead i would imagine that nunu is going to go ahead and go with the swifties we do see that rakan does the the grand entrance not quite able to get it Clad is dismounted I think Jax is going to be able to go ahead and get this kill. But there's the rest of Montello in a great rotation up into the top lane. Well coordinated there by Montello. Jax was trying to go for the kill, but got ambushed. And even though he had the flash, sometimes it's not worth blowing the flash. If, if you, in that case, you're three on one, right? So it's better to just keep the summoner, accept your fate, and and just kind of move on. So it does look like Montello is gonna go ahead and secure this Rift Herald uh, without anybody contesting as Jax is, is down as well. Jax has completed the jungler item. Nico sending in the clone there. One thing I will say is that Vayne is doing a very good job at CS. Uh, sitting at a, almost a, a 20 something CS lead advantage over the Lucian. Uh, given that we're at 13 minutes, that's a relatively big lead. Uh, Swain, although is down by, by a 45 CS right now. Um, Swain has the ability to just really sit under tower with this health and mana that he has. Not necessarily, he's not gonna kill Kled and Lane by himself at this point, but he's able gonna just to be able to sit there and really sustain. So we do see the Jax coming in here. Uh, really would have preferred to see the Jax drop the stun there on, on Lucian. So you wouldn't have had to have used as many summoners, but you still secured the kill anyway. So it's okay. It, it, it works out in the end. So it does look like we are going to have another Drake coming up here in about 45 seconds. So I would imagine that Montello is going to try to get some additional vision in there. They have some vision in the river 
uh, but it is all relatively close to expiring. So again, this is this is at least a good thing for Swain up there on the top lane is that he is going to be able to go ahead and just keep this wave away from tower. And then that'll stop Kled from being able to go ahead and get this, this objective up in the top. While Lucian and Karma down there in the bot lane are getting pretty close to getting that first turret. So although it's not worth a ton right now, I would definitely say that this Drake that's coming up here, although it's just... Uh, I believe that's an ocean drake, but they are going to go ahead and drop Shelly in the bot lane and Shelly's going to go ahead and get the necessary hit off there. And actually they don't even need Shelly to go ahead and get it. Lucian is able to go ahead and secure the first turret for Montello there. Get a little bit of an extra gold bump there. So not a ton, but just enough in order to make things worthwhile. Um, with the new turret plating and everything like that, that they've added, um, it's actually not a huge, huge advantage now in order to go ahead and get first turret it's still something nice just because it's a neutral objective and you're working towards something um trying to protect the turret there but i do think that they're going to go ahead and they do secure the the second tier turret and right now montello is just pushing they're trying to push this recon vein all the way back into base nico was able to go ahead and get a tier one turret in mid uh, but the bot side of the map has opened up quite a bit here for Montello. Uh, you're going to see that they now have Drake priority down there in the bot lane. Nico is potentially going to get caught out here. I don't know if she is aware as they do drop vision there on Gromp. So they do know that they're there. But uh, this should give Montello a free uh, Drake here. Nico is down here potentially to try to contest. But Nico is all by herself, and I don't know if she's going to be able to go ahead and secure anything. It might actually lose her her life. She's able to flash out of there, but Karma is throwing down some serious burst damage. And we're going to see quite a bit of an exchange down here. Vayne is down here. Vayne does not have all... Vayne actually used ultimate, so she is going to be able to start to throw down some serious damage here. If she's able to tumble and get to this Ari... That's going to be another kill going over. We do see, yep, there goes Vayne, able to go ahead and secure the double kill on the bot lane. Their team loses it. Oh, and Rakan is able to go ahead and get the Nunu, drops the Ignite down. Uh, Swain did TP into that battle, uh, not able to get any assists. Might cost him his tower up in the top, but that was a really good team fight for Tosa West. So Vayne now sitting at 3-2, and two, Lucian at 3-2. and two. If you were to ask me which I would rather have on my team, a 3-2 Vayne or a 3-2 Lucian, no offense to Montello, but I'm going to take the Vayne. Uh, so Tosa West is going to be able to go ahead and secure their own Tier 2 turret, uh, while Clyde up in the top lane is able to go ahead and secure his own turret as well. The Lucian ultimate coming out using a bit of a wave clear, but we do see Karma is able to go ahead and help speed him up. <laughs> Nico needs to be careful with this taunt here. Although she's going to go ahead and root him. And Vayne, uh, Swain is right there as well. But Swain misses. Oh, that's a nice snowball coming in from Nunu. And we're going to see a nice team fight going over to Montello. And now Clyde is sitting at 3-0 with a 650 gold bounty on himself. That's a pretty big lead there for Kled there. And we're going to see quite a bit of exchange here. So Montello backing off here. Going to go ahead and try to... Probably scout out some vision, although only Karma has a sweeper. Uh, we do see that uh, Tosa West is going to go ahead and have to reset. Hey, get off the rug. Don't eat the rug. Where's your toy? Go get your toy. So we do see that uh, Montello is going to go ahead and kind of reset here in the mid. They got a wave here. I do believe that they're going to be able to go ahead and burst this turret down uncontested. Tosa West was in the process of resetting, going back for item buys and stuff like that. So they're going to go ahead and push this wave back out. And now it's just kind of in this stalemate as the waves are pushing in and out for different schools. So it does look like with three people on the bot side. For Montello, they're going to be looking to go ahead and push and try to break into that turret, get that first inhib, 
Got the waves pushing there. And you got a pretty fed cled right now. And you got a Lucian that's 3, 2, and 3. So we do see Jax jumps in. And it looks like three members of Tosa West are going to go ahead and go down to the bot lane in order to kind of deal with this wave. We do see that Jax is caught out here by Kled. Needs to be careful here. Kled flashes forward. Going to go ahead and jump to his top laner there. So that's going to be a flash, I believe, for both um, as well. Vayne's going to go ahead and get caught out here. She's going to go ahead and try to get away from the Lucian. But I think there's the heal the grand entrance and i don't think rakan has enough she's able to go ahead and burst down a little bit but nunu is able to go ahead and get the secure shut down there ari's able to flash over to go ahead and get the rakan swain's able to go ahead and get the ari ari's able to go ahead and get a double kill swain just bursting down everybody but it's not gonna be enough and that's gonna be the end and that's gonna be nunu getting another kill going for montello so montello is up 12 to 6 both teams are tied with four turrets, and Montel is sitting at about a 5k gold lead right now with two drakes of their own. Jax is trying to clear this wave off, so Montel isn't able to break into the base right away. Although Montel doesn't have a ton of deep vision right now inside of their jungle, I would really like to see that Toza West picks up a, a sweeper or two just so that way then they can get a little bit more vision priority in their own jungle when you're defending like they are it's really important to get some of that vision in your own jungle um, like if you look at that last team fight there Vayne was able to get caught out because there was no vision and then a team fight ensued and if you don't have vision in your own jungle it's hard to say when to back off uh, instead you're just engage 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 Whereas if you had vision, you could see that the entire team was coming and you're at a disadvantage. And, and then you can say, you know, peel or something to, to that effect. Um, pretty popular within pro teams or uh, highly competitive teams, especially with vision barriers. It's, it's common to say like burn, 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 which basically means use all like just go in, keep going, keep going, keep going, burn all your summoners, burn all your. Um, your alts and everything like that in order to, to try to get a team fight that works in your advantage See again the sweeper right there not able to be seen Nico misses the ultimate Nunu is able to go ahead and shut down the Swain there Vayne's able to shut down the Ari on the back line Jax is trying to get some damage down there But I don't think it's going to be enough going to go ahead and get caught here And it's going to go ahead and be a kill going over to Lucian Vayne is now shut down by Kled up in the top lane Kled sitting at 4 0 and 4. So Kled's got a lot of damage coming down. And that's going to be the third Drake going over to Montello. Montello most likely is going to go ahead and kind of push these waves back out and then back in order to get some items here as well. Uh, Nunu sitting at about 1,500 gold. Lucian's on 1,000. And, and Kled is sitting at about 1,200. So gonna see a next partial item spike the nunu has the completed uh gargoyle stone plate there making him super tanky uh for these team fights and he's just able to go ahead and cc everybody lucian's really starting to pick up some of those items elected to go with the black cleaver which i kind of find interesting the cooldown reduction is really nice the health is pretty nice as well um but Nobody is building armor on the side of of Tosa West. So I, I'm kind of surprised with uh, with the cleaver pick there. But, you know, if you're 4, 2, and 10, you can buy whatever you want at that point. You're pretty far ahead. So um, Nico Swain just pushing this wave out of the mid. We do see uh, both teams kind of getting together here in the mid. Again, no sweepers on the side of Tosa West. So they keep walking over that ward that's there and... Montello knows exactly where every team member is right now for Tosa West. So they know, they see that two members are backing right now. This, if they really wanted to, they could probably go for Baron right now, knowing that Vayne and Nico had backed right there. But they elect to just go ahead and push the wave. Now they elect to go for Baron. This could be something that they're just trying to bait out.
do you see the righteous glory has been completed as well uh, on Nunu. So able to really get some of that engage. Uh, Ari's jumping in in order to go ahead and get the Rakan. Here comes the Nico. Able to go ahead and secure the Baron there. But we're going to see how many people walk out of this Baron pit with the buff. Vayne's just going to go ahead and shred them down. Nunu, one of the last ones alive. Going to go ahead and go down as well. That's a double kill or triple kill going over to Jax. That was a good team fight there on the side of Tosa West. Tosa now has... Unfortunately, no real waves pushing in their advantage. Uh, go ahead and clean up this mid turret here and then start to, to see if they can go ahead and put a little bit of pressure into the base here uh, against Montello. Risky call for Nico to go ahead and flash ulti into the Baron pit, but worked out to their advantage. Swain was able to go ahead and apply quite a bit of CC for themselves as well. And right now it looks like Tosa is just electing to go ahead and kind of do a little bit of counter jungling here take what buffs that they want and kind of go out um, push out the bottom and top waves and i would imagine that they're going to go ahead and back after they push these waves reset get those items spend all that bank that they just made on getting those shutdowns we do see that Jax does now have a 450 gold uh, bounty out on his head and we see the tp coming in needs to be careful here vein dashes around the clad here Vayne's got the damage, but Clyde is able to go ahead. Here comes the CC. Not enough from the Jax there. Oh, the Clyde flashes into the Jax. And Jax is able to go ahead and secure the kill. So that's going to be a quick, quick turnaround there for Clyde with a 40-second cooldown timer. And now has wasted the flash and the TP. So not going to be able to quickly engage in the team fights. Lucian is able to go ahead and get the shutdown there on Nico. The Baron-powered minions looking to go ahead and crack down on this Tier 2 turret. They're able to go ahead and do it, and they're looking to go ahead and crack into Tosa West base. And I do think they got the damage. Swain is in the back line here, but I don't think Swain's going to be able to do anything. Going to go ahead and have to flash into base, and is going to get shut down real quick. A lot of damage coming down here. Ari's able to go ahead and secure the double kill, and that's for sure going to go ahead and be the base getting cracked into this is going to be an inhib as well going down the total kills right now is up to 33 so my vote of 28 is completely uh eliminated crypto with the only other vote coming in at 43 so it looks like montello is starting to back up a little bit here the other drake is coming up here in about 30 seconds so they're going to do the exact same thing that tosa west just did to them they're going to clear all the jungle caps they're going to drop some vision in the jungle so they can see when Tosa West is coming. And they could be looking in order to maybe even set a trap here. The Drake's up here in 10 seconds. We see all the members coming in. We see Montello's grouping right there on the river. And we see the Clyde coming in. The Clyde's going in on Nico, but which Nico is it? Lucian's able to go ahead and find the correct Nico there and is able to go ahead and sh get the Nico uh, and now they're really looking to go ahead. They got super minions coming. This could be the final team battle. Jax has to go ahead and jump away there. The Baron powered minions are knocking on the Nexus turrets. The wave clear is coming in. Nico misses the charm, but I think this could be the team fight. Nico still got 16 seconds. Swain CC'd. Brought really, really low, and that's going to be the kill going over to Kled. Karma is able to go ahead and get the shutdown. Rakan's trying to do what he can. Vayne trying to get those final kills. Able to go ahead and get it. Flashes in. Tries to get it. Has a double kill. Oh, can this Vayne 1v5? Got to go ahead and get the Lucian. There's the Quadrant. Could we see? Oh, Vayne's going to go ahead and go ahead and back off and not be thirsty and go for that Penta kill. That was a fantastic Vayne play there. And now Vayne's sitting at 8, 5, and 4. We could see that. Toso West goes for this Drake here. I think Vayne would have the damage. Uh, Nunu is up here in 10 seconds, but Vayne could probably solo this, uh, especially with Nico. The biggest question is I don't know if... Oh, no, they'll be able to shred it down. So ignore me. Toso West trying to stay in this. Oh, we got a total kill count right now of 41. So Crypto, you only got two more kills uh in order to get it correct so i think we're going to see a little bit more uh these team fights are swinging back and forth just haymakers being thrown by both teams 
Vayne played that one extremely well. Uh, Vayne did just also complete the Phantom Dancer as well. So we have a three item vein. And if you remember earlier on, I said a three item vein is extremely deadly. That is able to carry a team uh, on their shoulders, as you saw, almost able to go ahead and 1v5. Do you see both teams kind of setting up here in the mid, potentially for one more team fight? And if we have a team fight, given the base situations on both teams here, it could just be the end of the match. So here comes the Clad Ultimate. The Swain is a little bit too far forward. We do see Nico in the back. She's able to go ahead and get a five-man route. Swain gets Karma. Rakan with a double kill. Vayne shuts down Kled. And we're going to go ahead and see who got that one. The Jax was able to go ahead and get the Nunu. I think Tosa can run this down mid and potentially end the game. Cooldowns, respawn timers are sitting at about 30 seconds. There's a wave coming in here behind the Jax as well. So they have a wave there. They have the damage. They got to get through this super minion wave here. But it looks like they're going to go ahead and Alexa go for Baron and get the Baron buff. Vayne's going to go ahead and push this wave in. While the rest of her team elects to go for the Baron. That was another fantastic team fight. That Nico alt was clutch. So Vayne really trying to get this down. The Aria, Lucian, and Karma are all up right now. And the damage is going to be there. Vayne is able to go ahead and get that break into the Montello base. We're going to go ahead and see the Baron going over to the red team. We're going to go ahead and see Tosa West backing, resetting, getting some of those final items potentially to make their push into the base of Montello. Montello's trying to clear out some of the vision that was set in their jungle, trying to get a little bit of control back on the map. So despite pulling it in really close here uh, at the 32 minute mark, again, there is finally a far sight uh, ward there by Vayne. Still no sweepers, not a ton of control wards here on the river or on the on the map in general for Tosa West. I know that uh, Montello cleared a couple of them out, but at this stage of the game, control wards are extremely important. Get that vision. Um, always buy more. If you have 75 gold and you have an extra space in your inventory uh, after you back, get another control ward. Uh, reset up vision wherever you need to in order to make sure that your team is able to get what they need. So Swain is able to go ahead and get some damage down on the Lucian. The Lucian ult's going to have to come out trying to save his Nunu, but to no avail. Here is the inhib going down in the mid. There's a pretty big wave here. We could see that Tosa West is going to go ahead and go for it. They dropped the redemption. Here comes the Clyde ultimate trying to get onto the jacks. Clyde's really got to try to get onto the back line. Then Nico's able to go ahead and get another three-player route. Here comes the redemption. Rakan is really low. Might be going down. Does go down, but the Vayne has the double kill. The Vayne's going to go ahead and shut down, and that's going to go ahead and be the game. That's a quadra kill again, so that's two quadra kills for Vayne in this game, and they're going to go ahead and secure the win. Tosa West coming from behind, tying it up at 26-26, and is able to go ahead and turn it for the victory. So congratulations to Tosa West. That was a fantastically played game. Um, it was well played on both teams, but...